Hi, I want to take a few minutes to show you how to run a script in R. This is a great capability because once we know how to run a script, then any kind of code we can think of or find other places, we can run that code to perform the analysis we want. So I'm going to show the capability on RStudio Cloud. Um, you can also run this on regular RStudio. Uh, if you don't have an account, you'll want to sign up and create one. I find for most people, the free account is probably enough. Uh, it lets you create quite a few projects, and unless you're running with huge data sets, you'll be just fine. So let me log in, and we'll see how to do it. So when I log in, it's going to take me to my workspace and any projects that I may already have. But I want to show today how to create a new project. So first, I'm going to click on New Project. And sometimes this can take a while to open. But here we now have our uh, new project created. We can give it a title. I'm just going to call it our script demo. Just give it a simple name. And first, I want to explain what we're, we're looking at uh, with the different boxes. And I'm going to go ahead and create file, new file, our script, so that we'll have that window. So now essentially we have four boxes here. This box here is where we're going to actually put our script code and run it. This box shows us the output messages from running that code. So this could be either data that the code is creating, or it could be an error message or anything else that might be relevant. In the bottom right, we have uh, where we can manage any files that we want to upload or export. Um, and we also can get our plots will be there. So any graphs we create, we can see them there. And packages are like libraries uh, in R. So much like an Excel add-in, uh, we can add a package if we want to use some functionality from that package. So that'll tell us, for example, what packages are there. And you can see I've got a few uh, loaded right now. And then the top right uh, will tell us what data sets. Uh, that we have when we start creating some of our data tables and variables. It'll tell us what's there. First thing we probably want to do is upload a file. So we have some data, right? And so I'm going to click Files in that bottom right box and then Upload. And it's going to let me choose the directory for my file. So I'm going to uh, go to where I have the file that I want to show, the analysis demo. And this is just a sample survey analysis from Excel. Nothing fancy. You'll see what it looks like in a moment. And now you can see the file is there, right? Um, uh, but that just loads into the environment. We want to import the data set so we can start using it. So on the top right, we can click on under environment, import data set from Excel. Uh, if it asks you to install any packages like read Excel, you do want to install those. And so to get the file that we actually want to import, we hit Browse. And the file I just loaded is now here in my environment. So I click Open. And uh, here it shows me a preview of the data. So it looks right, right? There's some variable names in the first row. It's loaded those automatically. Now you want to make sure you check first row as names so you can see it. And there the data starts. So we can click Import. And now you'll notice a couple things happened. One, we now have a table over here on the right. So I'll make it a little bigger so we can see more stuff there. Um, this is the table it just loaded. So one thing we can do is click there and see this is all the variable names. So it lets us know what variables it loaded. So I like to kind of look through there and just make sure it got most of the names. And you can see this survey was liking for a lot of different flavors. So that's why we see the flavor names there. It also tells me there were 28 variables total and 138 observations. And so I did indeed run this for 138 people. So this makes me think the data certainly did load in fine. And I can also see over here on the top left, sample survey analysis. It has a copy of my data as well, too. So I like to at least look through that. And it looks right. They were one to seven scales. And so most of the data certainly looks like it's generally loaded correctly there. Um, next, what we want to do is start with our script. So if I go back and click on the untitled one, this was the new script I'd created. And the first thing we're often going to want to do uh, that I do is kind of a convention is I always call my main data set my data. So if we type my data, 
And then if you do a less than sign and a hyphen, space, and then type the name of the file we just loaded, and actually it autofills for you, which is kind of nice. I can click on that. This command here, by typing this and hitting run, what it does now is creates a data called my data. That's an exact copy of the data that we loaded. And I do this so then when I have sample scripts or other code I want to reuse, I always know it's called my data and I don't have to change it each time. Uh, so it's kind of nice uh, for that. So let's go now look at the script um, that we might want to copy for this. And so sometimes you may get a script off of Google or wherever else. Um, I've got some that I keep handy for my own use. And so let's open that file up. And so here's is some sample R code uh, that I have. And here I have the first command that I already did. And let's say the next thing I want to do is I need to load any libraries I'm going to use. And so for the sample code I have in this batch, I have three different libraries that I need to use. So if I'm in PDF, if I hit the select tool, and then I can highlight those three lines, hit Control C to copy it. So now if I go back to my script editor, and click in my script window and hit control V. It's copied those three lines, right? And now you can just run each one. So what I do sometimes when it's brand new code that maybe I haven't used before, uh, I'll just do it one line at a time. So if I click anywhere on line two and hit run, you notice down in the bottom left now, it is loading that package of psych. And so what this code I have here does is it checks first to see if it's already installed, then it won't reinstall it. But if it isn't, it installs it, and then no matter what, it's going to load the library, so we'll have it ready to use. Um, and so you, each time you want to do your, your batch of our analysis, you'll need to load those libraries. So that's loading the first one. And then a lot of times it gives you some weird error messages here. Um, generally, you can ignore those as long as it's running your functions. Another way you can run the lines is I can just highlight both of those two lines, the next two, click Run. And that will install those two. And so this is a nice way if you have a large block of code that you've already used before, you know that it works, uh, you can just highlight the whole region uh, and hit run and it will, it will go quickly. Next, uh, I want to show um, how we can get some output. So let's start running some actual statistics. So for that, I can go back to my script file again, my PDF file with samples. And notice what I, what I like to do in uh, my code is generally I highlight the things that need to be changed. So generally these are things specific to the analysis being done. Let's say I just want to see the means and standard error. So then I can highlight this section. And in these R scripts, anything with the uh, number sign is just a comment, just so you know kind of what's happening. Uh, it doesn't affect how it runs. So I hit Control C on those. I can click in my script window, hit return, and paste it. And now that code is all in there. But now I have to fix those areas that were highlighted. So the first thing it asked me highlighted was the variable uh, wildcards. And so here I need to change, um, in my case, the group of variables that I want to analyze. Uh, is if I look over here in my sample data again, it starts with like underbar, each one. So I can take advantage of that, and here, instead of like, in this case, I just need to add the underbar. Like underbar will now pull all of those variables into this analysis instead of me having to type them all individually. So it's a huge time saver, right? And then I can look through and change the other things I need to change. So for instance, I may need to change um, how many standard error bars I want to show. Uh, but maybe here I want to leave it as 1.3. So I'll leave it that way, right? And then I want to change the title of my chart. So instead of liking by product here, I want to say uh, like, you know, liking by flavor, right? And then uh, in this case, uh, the 1.3 standard errors is a 80% confidence interval, so I don't have to change that. And then likewise, uh, for this, I can change what the text was in the question I ask. I always like to have that uh, text there so it's handy um, for the plot so people know when they look at the plot this creates what the question was and lines I'll check again just to make sure I changed everything so it's the variable names I was supposed to change the standard errors if I wanted the title and then this caption and so it looks like I've changed everything I need to 
So now I can go back to my R Studio, and um, so I, I can now highlight all this range since I've run this code before. I can just highlight everything and hit run. And it now created a plot over here. Now clearly it's scrunched down because it's miniaturized, but you can make it larger if you want. Um, as well as part of making that plot, it output, if we go down to the output screen, here is for every flavor, it gives me some statistics. Quite a few actually, but the main ones you'll probably want will be uh, the liking, uh, this is our sample size, uh, this is the mean, so the average across all of our respondents, the standard deviation of the data. Um, I've also sorted them in descending order, which makes it a little easier to see. Uh, it also gives you the standard error for the mean. So that tells us how much we think uh, we could be off of what the true amount is. Uh, if you want to play, use this data, you can also copy and paste this data, you know, highlight the data you want, and then you can paste that into Excel and then use the text to columns feature uh, and that will let you um, have the data in Excel if you want to play with it, create your own charts, um, and so on. And so uh, we'll do one more example of, of this. Right, and so again, what we do if we want, we go to our PDF, is where I have my sample code written, and this is to, for example, make a histogram. Right, and so Control C, and then now I go back to my R script, do Control V, and again I've got to change a few things. So my variable name here, let's imagine I'm just going to look at like, underbar, and maybe I'll do like, underbar, uh, orange, and then I might have here histogram for orange, liking, and of course I can change this caption text to be whatever I want. I won't change it here. And if we highlight that block of code and hit run, we now get the histogram over here. So when we have our plots, one thing you may notice is this is the second plot I've created. So I have the histogram. I also have my means with standard errors. So it's nice to see those in R and we can scroll through them. The other thing that's nice to do with the plots is I can go here under plot, export, and do copy to clipboard shows me the plot and now I can uh, right click and do um, copy image and then if I go to PowerPoint for example now <clears throat> I can then do paste and paste the image in and there's my plot and I can resize this if I want and, and play with making it look pretty and, and other words I may want to put so that's a nice way to use the plots uh, in our script as well so hopefully that gives you a, a nice introduction to all the things we can do in uh, R with our scripting. So again, we can upload our file from our survey and import it into uh, the data environment. And then we can use our uh, scripts to run any analysis we can think of that we want to run for that. And so certainly I have a few that are already in my library. Uh, but almost anything else you want to think of, you can go to Google and, and typically find someone who's done that, and you'll just need to tweak it to be your variable names, your data set name, uh, and so on. And so it really unlocks a lot of power for analysis. So hopefully this helps you uh, to get started, uh, and good luck with your R analysis.